Hello, this is the AI Lab. Today it's my pleasure to welcome Dr. Stefan Verhulst, an expert in using data and technology for social impact. Stefan is the co-founder of several research organizations, including the Governance Laboratory, GovLab, at New York University, and the Data Tank, based in Brussels. He focuses on using advances in science and technology, including data and artificial intelligence, to improve decision-making and problem-solving, and has been recognized as one of the 10 most influential academics in digital government globally. The reason? A Frontiers Policy Labs contribution written by Stefan entitled Are we entering a data winter? On the urgent need to preserve data access for the public interest. Let's hear what Stefan has to say. So, Stefan, in your recent blog post, you discussed the concept of a looming data winter. Could you provide a brief overview of what this term means and why you believe this winter is coming? Thanks so much for the question. So for the last few years, um, I've been working on how do we provide access to data in a way that we can reuse it for public interest purposes. And so we've made great advances in terms of opening up government data, in terms of opening up private data through, for instance, data collaboratives, uh, but also in opening up, for instance, platform data for research purposes so that we can really understand what's happening in the context of social media, in the context of democracy as well. Now, what I've witnessed the last few months, and that's mainly as a result of advances in artificial intelligence, is that we actually see a backtracking of the progress that we've made in society as it relates to opening up data for public interest purposes. And so in my blog with regard to data winter, I position the assumption and the premise that at a time of AI summer, when everyone suddenly is excited about the potential of generative AI, is excited about really the advances, and there are real advances made in terms of using artificial intelligence for public interest purposes, at the time of an AI summer, we are actually entering a data winter. And there are multiple exhibits, multiple examples that made me believe that we are actually seeing a backtracking as such. One example is, for instance, the fact that social media platforms such as X, but also Facebook, have closed down access to some of their data for research and for data journalism purposes as well. We also have seen that, for instance, science data, such as climate science data, which was typically open science, has now become commercialized and is becoming proprietary data and closed for many in society. We also have seen a backtracking at the level of open government data. Any of the open data initiatives that were heralded a few years ago as kind of open government initiatives are now kind of underfunded and quite often not as exciting to maintain as they anticipated. And then lastly, of course, and that's where it really matters for AI, a lot of the initial data that was available for training data has now also become much harder to access. And that's a result, of course, of the concerns that some of that data has been extracted without a return uh, to actually the data holder. And so we have seen in case of, for instance, court cases, but also in really closing down certain kinds of data set, we've seen a um, closing off, an enclosure of some of the data that can be used of uh, it can be used for training as a result of what I have also called generative AI anxiety, uh, meaning data holders that are anxious about how the data is being used. So taking that all together, uh, we are actually seeing a decrease in access to data. And as a result, we are entering a data winter, which if we are not careful, and we already have seen multiple signs of that, may actually affect the AI summer that we currently have as well. Thank you, Stefan. That, that, that is concerning, <laughs> obviously. And, and in your blog, you talk about social media, you talk about climate data as you did, but 
what what exactly hinders then uh, that public access to these critical data sets? And also, can you maybe explain a bit more that generative AI anxiety that you mentioned uh, previously in your response? Yes, yeah, so there are multiple um, uh, ways data is currently becoming enclosed. As I said, A, some of the data that typically was available through APIs has now been closed off. And so some are calling this the post API environment that we're currently in, where data was easily available through an API, now is actually much harder to access unless one pays for it, which obviously from a marketplace makes sense. But if this is about, and this is my main focus, about data for public interest purposes, then it actually harms those potentials for public interest purposes as well. There are other uh, ways data is being shielded at the moment, uh, including uh, new licensing that is being used to actually shield off uh, the data for public interest uh, purposes as well. So there are a whole range of vehicles that exist to enclose data that actually makes it much harder to access it for reuse. But as it relates to the anxiety, the gen AI anxiety, here we just have to look at, for instance, what's happening in peer produced knowledge commons, such as, for instance, uh, Wikipedia, um, where um, we see actually a decline in access to Wikipedia, a decline in people accessing Wikipedia, but we also see a decline in people contributing to Wikipedia, uh, mainly because they fear that whatever they contribute will be used as training fodder for generative AI purposes as well. And so initiatives like Wikipedia, which are to a large extent, the main source quite often of a lot of the training data of generative AI services are currently also suffering from actually the extraction because they are dependent on contributions, voluntary contributions by uh, the audience and the participants. And that's now currently uh, declined as well. Thank you. Um, that that that's. <laughs> let's hope that AI then doesn't start writing Wikipedia. That would be. Well, that would be. Thing. So um, the good news is you don't just highlight a problem. You propose a solution or at least an idea which you've dubbed "decade of data" as a remedy to the current challenges in data accessibility. So could you outline what this initiative entails and how you believe it could transform data, data stewardship and collaboration, hopefully for the better? Yes, and so in order to turn the tide of the data winter and to anyway, make it less of a winter and more of a spring, um, uh, there are multiple ways uh, to go about this. And indeed, I've been calling for, together with others, such as the United Nations University, I've been calling for a decade uh, for data, which is a typical way uh, the United Nations quite often is um, operating in order to feature uh, a problem and to then have a well-defined strategy to actually start uh, addressing that problem. And so a decade uh, for data, if this would be announced at the next UN summit of the future, would have multiple uh, components. One component would indeed be advancing data collaboration, where you actually have new models of data being shared, including, for instance, data commons, which, of course, is a concept that already exists, but can be updated in the current AI environment. And from my point of view, there's a lot of potential to identify what data should be common for instance, for, trader, for training data, but also for public interest purposes. And how do you then build a data commons, a governance structure in a way that provides access to data uh, in a non-extractive, but equally accessible kind of manner as well. So that's kind of one area where the decade for data could focus on. But then in order to facilitate collaboration, in order to provide access or request access, I also feel that we need a new reimagined profession, which is this profession of data stewards that are really individuals or teams of individuals or a function, it doesn't automatically have to be one single individual, that really has the sophistication and the competencies to really start thinking about how do we provide access to data 
in a systematic, so not just always a pilot, a sustainable, so that I also understand what are the costs involved and what's the return on investment and responsible manner, because obviously there are risks involved in making data available. And so data stewardship is all about accessing data or providing access to data in a systematic, sustainable, and responsible way. And then the third pri other priority of a decade for data would be to really start rethinking data governance and embedding digital self-determination in data governance in order to go beyond the current paradox of consent. Consent is a really important uh, principle, but it's also a very flawed uh, um, impl implementation, especially when it comes to providing access for reuse, because typically consent only applies to the use for which the data was collected. And so we need new mechanisms to facilitate access in a way that aligns with perceptions and a way that aligns with expectations and preferences of communities and people at large. And that's where digital self-determination comes in, where you actually have a new approach to determine how communities, how individuals want their data to be reused, not just locked up, in order to advance society's uh, well-being as well. And the key component of that that, I've, that we've been working on is to actually establish a social license for reuse, where you establish an understanding on what are the preferences and expectations, translate that into a social license so that you can actually now um, start reusing data, but doing it so in a way that is trusted and in a way that is aligned with actually expectations of communities, of individuals as well. So these are kind of, just to get started, three areas where a decade for data would help address the data winter and also would help actually make advances in the unaddressed issues of data uh, because everyone is focusing on AI governance, but it's not like data governance was set in stone and had solved all the problems. And I think we still need a lot more work in order to address the data divide, address the concerns that exist with data and to actually start using data for social benefit as well. Thank you, Stefan. I think that that's, that's a very useful set of uh, recommendations. Um, and also, I noted that you are actually saying AI might create jobs, <laughs> not just take them away if there's data right. stewards um, popping yeah. up, which is good news. Uh, thank you so much for your contribution. And I encourage everyone to read your blog post uh, and see why we need to fight back against that data winter and try to create spring. Thank you. Thanks, Caroline.